So we have in tandem the conversation of he won't be given security, he's not going to be given a title, and also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? During a 2021 interview with Oprah, the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, alleging a member of the royal family raised questions about what color her son's skin would be. The ripple effects lasting to this day. Do you know who made those comments about Archie's skin color? I do know who made the comments about Archie's skin color. The names were mentioned in letters between Meghan and Charles that were exchanged sometime after the Oprah interview. Royal reporter Omid Scobie's new book, Endgame, sharing new details, claiming it was two people who made those comments. Just one of the many allegations in the new tell-all about the House of Windsor. Are you able to share the two names that you know of? Unfortunately, those are two names that I have to keep to myself for now. But I do wonder if that might change over the future. It does seem that Harry and Meghan have decided to put that to rest. Do you think that we'll ever find out who that person or who those people are that allegedly made these comments? The only way that we would ever find out is if a member of the royal family directly involved chose to say so on the record. We won't have any confirmation or that won't gain any further traction unless that happens. Queen Elizabeth releasing a statement at the time saying the issues raised, particularly that of race, are concerning. And Prince William asserting we are very much not a racist family. Scobie claims that Meghan and Charles corresponded about the incident. And ultimately the Sussexes, he writes, still keep them in the loop on their family life, sending new photos of the children. We know from sources that Charles was horrified that that's how Meghan felt those conversations were and that he wanted to sort of as a representative of the family have that conversation with her. It's the latest chapter in an ongoing royal saga. Palace intrigue, reports of warring princes and a fractured family. I believe that this book will burn the bridges for good. On the brother's alleged rift, Scobie doesn't hold back, pointing the finger at Prince William, saying he briefed the press about Prince Harry. He's sharing private information about his brother that ended up on the front page of a newspaper not long later. And these are things that have caused irreparable damage in the relations between each other. Scobie also alleging William has become a company man, an heir increasingly comfortable with the palace's dirty tricks and the courtiers who dreamed them up. We've seen the kind of emergence of a man who is much harder, who seems to have embraced and embodied the royal institution. Do you think that's a fair assessment of the prince? The book is really quite unflattering of Prince William. It portrays him as being um, volatile at times. I think we'll see people who feel differently leap to William's defence. Him and Kate are consistently now very popular members of the royal family with the public. The book claims it was William who spearheaded efforts to deal with his disgraced uncle, Prince Andrew. I was impressed to learn that Prince William was the one that really kind of led the charge to stripping Prince Andrew of his titles and finally taking action over something that had been long ignored or not properly dealt with within the institution. And I think that that was a genuine moment where we saw William step into air mode and do what had to be done. Still, Prince William and Prince Harry, once very close, are now rumoured to be estranged. The author says their tension apparent during the Queen's funeral when the princes and their wives, formerly nicknamed Fab Four, briefly reunited in mourning. I was told that that, that silence in the car on the way from the sort of quadrangle at Windsor Castle to the long walk was palpable, you know, it was just extremely uncomfortable and awkward. It was sad because I think that for the public, the image was, oh great, the Fab Four are back together again. The reality is, is after they left that walkabout, they didn't talk again. ABC News reached out to the Sussexes and have yet to receive a response. The late queen was revered by many in the United Kingdom. An estimated quarter of a million people lining up to pay their respects while her coffin lay in state. Scobie argues the new king, Charles III, faces an uphill battle. With Charles, it's different. We know that even as a Prince of Wales and in the run-up to throndom, he never had universal support from the royal institution. Charles is much less popular than his mother was. Polls are showing that he is struggling with young people. The monarchy is 
less popular than it has been. So things have shifted and it would be wrong to suggest that they haven't. Charles's nearly 15 month long reign has had its share of uncomfortable moments. <laughs> From anti-monarchy protests to this incident over a leaky pen. Do you think it's a fair comparison to compare King Charles to his mother, someone who served for 70 years? King Charles has an impossible act to follow. I do feel that the people around him probably be feeling pretty positive about how things are going because it is all relative. And I think what he's been very keen to do since he came to the throne is emphasize that continuity. ABC News reached out to both Kensington and Buckingham Palace for a response. Neither wanted to comment. This book is coming at a time where there seems to be so much change going on in the palace, in the monarchy. How do you think the palace is viewing Endgame? The book goes f much further back than that and brings up lots of negative narratives over the past few decades. And that's very uncomfortable for the royal family. These are all things that they do not want people to be reminded of 